Hi, and welcome to the first episode of the Loop and Bar podcast. Um, my podcast all about my knitting, uh, my crochet, and I'm hoping a little bit of sewing too, because I love to sew as well. Um, I think today's podcast is going to be mainly all about knitting with a little bit, I'll show you a little tiny bit of my crochet, um, but I have actually been knitting lately for the last few months, it's just been knitting, so that's mostly what I've got to show today. But first of all, I need to introduce myself. Um, I am Kate, and I come from, actually, I come from North East Lincolnshire, um, but I live in North Wales um, on a dairy farm, which is lovely. And I've got the window open. You might hear cows mooing. <laughs> is that the technical word? For the, I don't know if that's the technical word for it, but um, I'm not actually a dairy farmer. I live with a dairy farmer. Um, he does all the dairy farming, but um, I've got another job. But um, yeah, we live on a dairy farm. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. And I don't know if I've said this already, but it's on the edge of the Snowdonia National Park, so really pretty. Um, we get to see lots of mountains. If I walk up to the top of the farm with my dog, I can see Snowdon, Mount Snowdon, which is really nice, um, among other mountains. So that's lovely. That's where I live. Um, I've got, I'm, I'm checking my notes. I made some notes, otherwise I'll just forget what I want to say. Um, I've got um, a blog called Lupinbar and the address for that if you want to have a look is www.lupinbar.co.uk um, I actually have not done very much on that since October which is really naughty um, but I'm hoping doing the podcast um, well actually I, I know this for sure doing the podcast is going to get me back into the blog because I'm going to be putting um, show notes and links and information, maybe a few more images of, of the things that I'm going to talk about. So um, that will all go on the blog as well. So they can run side by side, hopefully complement each other. Um, but lately I've just been really, really enthusiastic to have a go at doing a podcast because I've been watching other podcasts. Um, I've really got into, um, particularly into three or four different podcasts. Um, love watching them while I'm knitting. Um, it makes me sit for longer and get more knitting done. So that is brilliant. Podcasts are brilliant. So I thought I just, I got caught up in the enthusiasm of, of people sharing their stuff and wanted to have a go myself. So here we are, the Loop and Bar podcast. Um, it's a Sunday morning and it's a really nice day outside. I was gardening. I was digging over my vegetable patch. I've got some berry plants that I want to put in. I've got what a, ras a blackberry, a raspberry, uh, and a rhubarb, which isn't a berry plant, but it's a fruit, um, and a big grassy bit um, that's overgrown on my vegetable patch, which I was digging away at this morning with the three chickens getting in the way and the dog, all of them just standing exactly where I wanted to put my fork into the ground. Um, which always happens, um, and I found, even though it's a beautiful day, I, I don't quite have the energy for that this morning, I don't know why. So I'm hoping that, um, I think I was thinking about the podcast, I just wanted to sit and do this. So I'm going to do this this morning, and then hopefully I'll have a bit more energy by this afternoon, and I can get out there and get stuck in to my digging again. Let's just hope. Um, I've got some licorice tea, it's absolutely gorgeous. I love licorice tea. And something I've noticed about all the people that I've watched on podcasts so far, everybody seems to love their tea. Knitting and tea goes together, I think. They love each other. Um, and it's true because I absolutely love knitting and I love drinking tea while I'm knitting. So, and I love my teacup too. I'll introduce my teacup quickly. Um, I bought I'll just show you a bit closer. Um, here's the saucer. It's not very often that 
a soak with each other. It's not very often that um, I drink out of a cup and saucer, but I thought I would use something really pretty for the podcast. So, a bit of a podcast prop, but really it's an excuse to use it as well, because usually I'm a bit frightened to just use it, and then perhaps a dog will knock it over, or it'll get broken, or I'll leave it around the house somewhere, and then it'll get knocked. So normally it just lives on my bedroom windowsill, very safe not being used, but I thought good op good opportunity to use my really pretty teacup today because it means I can show it off as well. Yes, that's lovely tea. Hmm. Right, is there, oh, I know what else I need to say. Um, I'll say it now, but I'll put, put this in the notes as well. Um, I'm on Ravelry. Now, am I on Ravelry's Loop and Bar? I think I'm on Ravelry's Loop and Bar, but it could be loopandbar.kb, I'm not sure. So um, if I can work out how to do it, I'll write it here, like loads of very clever podcaster people do. Um, I'm pretty sure I can do that when I edit the video afterwards. So I'll try and put, if I talk about a website or a person or a pattern, I will really do my best to try and put something here, some writing there. I'm not very good at computers, so fingers crossed that I'll be able to do that. Um, the other thing that I'll just say quickly is, if I show you any labels, uh, yarn labels, during the podcast, which um, I will do, I'll show, I'll, I've got a couple to show you, um, you hopefully will see them the right way round, hopefully you'll be able to read the writing on them, but there's a strong possibility that you might see them the wrong way round. Um, like as in a mirror image because it's all going to depend on whether I can work out how to flip this video afterwards. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know. I know it's possible. I just don't know if it's possible for me to do it. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not that great. Um, I lose patience when I'm trying to do things with a computer for too long. Anything I don't understand, well, computer-wise, um, I haven't got, I haven't got too much patience with it. So. I'm going to try my best though because I want you to be able to see any labels or any writing that I put on here. I want you to be able to read them and see them the right, the right way around. So fingers crossed for that. If anybody's got any tips, I'd be so grateful because I'm recording this on my Apple Mac. I always forget what it's called. It's an Apple Mac computer um, with photo booth. So what, what does everybody else use? I know somebody use, some people use um, their phones. Um, maybe some people use a video camera. Do, they, do we still? Are they, do they still? Do we still have video cameras? I don't know. I don't know. I've got a, me and my um, partner Avion. We sh sort of share a smartphone, except, well, I've got it really, and the only reason I've got it is because I want to use Instagram. Um, but again, I'm quite limited um in using Instagram because I'm not really sure what I'm doing <laughs> on it and also sometimes my phone doesn't work for me um it doesn't connect to Instagram or it doesn't up what's it what's it say when it doesn't um it doesn't want to upload the new images or something and uh, I don't know I, I just give it a few seconds and I tap off it again so I'm on Instagram again as Lupin Bar but I don't know how often I'm going to be able to use Instagram at the moment because, like I say, um, I don't have a massive amount of success trying to put things on it. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'll try. I'll keep trying. I'll keep trying. I'll try, try to do better with that. Um, so, I'm on Facebook as well, but... My, my best places to find me are, really it's Ravelry because I go on there quite often. Um, you can send me messages. If anybody wants to say hello, that'd be, that'd be fantastic. I'd be really surprised. <laughs> um, very happily surprised. Um, and on Instagram as well. I find Ravelry the easiest thing to use, I think, because there seems to be less to have to filter through in terms of being in contact with people. But that's probably because I've only got one friend on, well, I've got about eight friends on Ravelry, but there's only one person that I actually know in person that's my friend on Ravelry, that's, she's my best friend, Emily. Um, yeah, we're the only people that really talk to each other on it so far, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. If I get lots of friends on Ravelry, 
that would be lovely. Um, could also be confusing, but only time will tell. Only time will tell. So, looking at my little reminding list that I've got just next to me here, um, I think the first thing I should talk about is my finished object, my most recent finished object. Um, I've only got one of them for you, so because, why is that? Because I'm working on quite a lot of other stuff, so most of this podcast today is going to be all about work in progress, I think. Um, what's on my needles. Uh, but I've got a finished object that I'd like to show you. I've actually finished three things very recently, but two of them I've been given away. Um, one was a cardigan for my niece, who's three, um, and that's on my Ravelry. So if, it's the only child's cardigan that's on my Ravelry. Um, so if you want to have a look at that, um, I've forgotten the name of the pattern now, but seeing as I don't actually have the cardigan here to show you, I won't talk too much about that. But I finished it and I was so enthusiastic to give it to my niece so that she could actually wear it while it was still cold um, outside, um, while the weather was still cold, because it was a really snuggly, um, chunky little cardigan with the leaves with leaves down the pa down the front. I'm just trying to think what it was called. Fire. Um, it had the word fire in it. Firecracker? No, that's not right. Anyway, it's on my Ravelry. Although there isn't a finished picture of it on Ravelry. I need to get a photo of, you, of her wearing it, actually. Um, hmm, need to get better at that, too. Anyway. But the thing I'm going to show you here, I did two pairs. Um, one pair has been given away to my niece's mum, my sister, um, for her birthday, which was in February, so I haven't got that show, but I immediately made myself a pair out of different yarn um, because I really liked them. I enjoyed the project and I had some yarn in my stash that I have had for a couple of years and just didn't know what to do with it um, and this was perfect. So. The only thing is that I haven't got the pattern right next to me. Where is it? But I think I can remember. Oh, it could be in here. Wait a minute. Sorry, I'm back. I'm back. It might be in my... Just excuse me a second while I look through here. It's probably in my basket. I'm going to give this another two, three seconds and then I'm going to give up. Maybe that was it. No, that's it. Oh well, never mind. I can remember what they were called. Um, I'll just I'll put the link here. The cupcake mitlets. This is on Ravelry, and I'm sure it's a free pattern. Um, pretty sure it's a free pattern download. So that was really that was really good. By um, this is amazing that I can remember the name of the lady. Actually, I'm sure. If I hope I get this right, Chandra Ramachandran. I think that's right. Um, I think that's the person that wrote the pattern and here they are. Now it's actually quite bright today which is lovely but not so brilliant for showing things so if I put them a bit closer hopefully, oh, hopefully you can see. Should I move them? There we go. If I move them around a bit you might be able to catch, you won't be able to see me but you might be able to catch the colour um, of the mittens or mitlets as they're called. There's the pair. I move back a bit. I've got a creaky chair, by the way. Sorry about that. I don't know what to do about that. Perhaps I'll put some oil on it. So these are the cupcake mitlets, um, and it's a really cute little lace pattern. And it's the first time I've ever knitted anything glovey or mitteny, anything for my hands, or any or my sister's hands, because that was who I did it for first. And the first time I've done anything with um, a thumb gusset, or because they don't have fingers, as you can see. Um, it's just a, an open end, which is lovely. But it's got a thumb gusset, so I thought this is a really good little learning project for me um, as a first time of, well, just to teach me a little bit about how to construct something that goes on your hand, really. Um, 
Yeah, it would be good for me to do a full pair of gloves, I think, or a full pair of mittens. Got a pattern in my wish list, actually. I'll tell you that later if I remember. Um, yeah, so this was a lovely pattern. I think I added, if I just hold it there, um, I added an extra lace repeat here because I wanted my mitten just to go a little bit higher up, up my fingers. Um, I quite like it because you can you can do that if your hands get cold. Or even that, which sort of defeats the object of wearing them a bit, but anyway, yeah. But they're brilliant for work. If I get cold hands while I'm at work, I work in a gallery, um, and but I really suffer with cold fingers and toes. So in the winter, um, even though the gallery is heated, um, it's perfectly fine, but I can still get cold fingers um, if I'm not moving around lots. So, and cold hands. and. Although you haven't got your fingers in the mittens all the time, especially if you're working on the computer or if you're talking to people and helping them, um, it still keeps my hands warm and that makes a really big difference. So also, I think, perfect for spring, being at the pub, holding your pint or your wine glass. It's a pint. It's, for me, it'd be a pint of shandy. So it'll keep your hands warm. Brilliant. It's like a glass warmer as well as a hand warmer. And I want to point this out, I really love the reverse side of this stitch. Um, I found this, I think I've seen this in, in other patterns as well. And there is one particular pattern, that's the reverse side of it. I just think it looks really cute. I think it defines the little um, flower motifs even more. I hope you can see it. I'll wiggle around a bit, I'll wiggle it around a bit, see if you can see where the best light is. There we go. I think I'd like to use this stitch pattern on another project, um, maybe on a cardi. It looks so cute on a cardi with this, with this stitch pattern reversed, so that it's the garter stitch that shows through with the eyelets, because I think, oh, really cute, make a really cute little cardi, so that's kind of in my mental note to Kate to make. Um, design pattern, find a pattern that does that. Perhaps I'll just make my own up. We'll see. Um, so, yeah, that's the cupcake mitlets. And the yarn I used is, now here's the bit where I show you the ball of yarn with the label on, and it may or may not be, the writing may or may not be the right way round. I hope it is. If it is, we can give me a little round of applause. I'm going to give me a little round of applause later, I think, because it means that I've been able to work out how to flip the video. If not, never mind, I'll try harder for next time. But here we go. As I'm showing you, it's the wrong way around. I'm sure it's going to be the right way around. I've got faith in myself. So, as I hope you can read, it says, I'm going to have to look at it, uh, Zilana Air from the Luxurious series um, and I bought this yarn, I'll turn it around so you can see it, in New Zealand. Um, not the Christmas we've just had but the one before that so a year and a bit ago. Avion and I went to New Zealand, Avi did I say this, Avion's who I live with, um, his name's Welsh, Welsh is his first language and um, Avion is a Welsh name, if you haven't heard it before, you might, if you're Welsh, you probably have heard of it before. Maybe even if you're not Welsh, you might have heard of it. I'd never heard of it when I first met him, and for about the first two months of being with him, I used to ask him all the time, am I saying your name right? <laughs> Which sounds ridiculous, but I just didn't know if I was saying his name right for ages. Um, but anyway, Avion and I went to New Zealand um, for Christmas and New Year, the year before last, the Christmas before last, uh, which was amazing, absolutely amazing trip. We've got friends and, or oh, Avion's got friends and family out there, what we have. Um, so we got to stay with some absolutely lovely people and then we did a bit of traveling around as well. And I'm, I'm unfortunate, unfortunately, I can't remember the town where I bought this, but there was a most gorgeous little yarn shop in a lovely little town. I remember eating sandwiches and banana smoothies in a cafe next door. I can't remember the name of the shop and it doesn't say it on the yarn board of course. If I ever remember I'll put it in. Um, I'll put it on the blog somewhere and give it a shout out but she was so friendly that lady 
and she had loads of different yarns. Um, but I had to buy this because, can you see it? Can you see the colour okay? Can you see it's a little tiny bit fuzzy? Maybe if you look again here, against the wall. Mm, where's the best place to put it? Yeah, anyway, if I put it closer, maybe you can see. Yeah, it shows a bit of a haze around it. It's fuzzy, it is so soft. There's no itching. There's not one tiny, tiny little prickle. It's really incredibly soft, it's beautiful, and it, it's very warm as well on my hands. And it's a blend of cashmere, and wait for it, brush tail possum down. Possum, it's possum hair, fur, hair, fur, down, possum down. Yeah, it's so soft. Uh, there's something else in it as well. What else is in it? Cashmere, brush tail, possum down. Oh, I'm sure it had something else in it as well. I saw it's, oh yeah, mulberry silk. That'll be why it's so soft as well. It's 100% luxury. It's complete luxury, this. And it's a bit of a lace weight. Um, I think it's a lace weight. Does it say on it? Yeah, it's a lace weight yarn because it just says it on the, on the ball. It's 25 grams, 175 metres. And the, it's recommended that you use a 2.25 um, needle with it. Which I think is what I've used for the mitlets, but I can't really remember. I think that was. I think that's what I've used for those. And the gauge turned out absolutely fine. Which was a bit of a surprise, actually, because it wasn't normally for me. But So that is my first finished object. Um, I probably finished those a few weeks ago. So that's the most recent thing that I have completed. Um, and yes, like I say, I did two pairs of those, but one of them's gone. I've still got some yarn left over from the pair I made for my sister. I'll show you it. This is the yarn. I can't show you the mittens, but they're on Ravelry. But this is the really lovely yarn I bought for my sister. It's Quince & Co. Um, oh, is it Turn? Hmm. It's on Ravelry. I'll put it here. I think it's Turn. It's definitely Quince & Co anyway, and the colour's called Beach Glass, and I've put it in a cake on my favourite winder. My winder's here, look. I love that thing. I love that thing. I love winding yarn into cakes, even if I don't want to use it. I don't... Are you not supposed to do that? Are you supposed to wait till you want to use the yarn till you put it into a cake? I don't. I just wind. While I'm running the bath, I'll come in here and wind some yarn. I love it. Anyway, it was alright that I wound that one because I used it. So I think I weighed the mittens, the mittlets, after I made them out of this. And then I weighed it. And I've got just enough, like, within something like 10 grams or less. So um, I think I'll risk it and try another pair. And actually, if I think I'm going to be a bit short, I can always do, um, because I've got ribbing around the top, can you see that? And the bottom. I could always do the ribbing in like a pale grey or something like that or something really bright maybe. Yeah and then I'll, ne I'll definitely will have enough there, enough yarn to finish those. Um, so as that's my only finished object I shall now show you what I've got on my needles. Sorry I keep looking over there I'm just checking my list. I've written it in Welsh for some reason. What's next on my <laughs> What's next on my list? I nearly said it in Welsh. I don't really speak Welsh. Um, I know some because I have to go to Welsh lessons every Monday. <laughs> I don't have to go. I'm, yeah, I don't have to go, but I do go to Welsh lessons every Monday. So because it's Avion's first language, obviously he speaks English. Um, but everybody in my village. Nearly everybody, not everybody, but most people speak Welsh. The people that don't speak Welsh are English and like me, who have moved here. Um, but this local vicinity that I live in is very Welsh speaking. And so if I want to have an idea of what people are talking about in the pub, or my little nieces and nephews on Avion's side when they're chatting, or when I'm with the family, um, if I want to know what's actually going on, I sort of need to know Welsh so I've been trying for the last two years to to learn it um, I'm rubbish but uh, 
anyway, you don't, I won't learn anything if I don't go to the lessons, so um, we'll see how that goes. Um, but, so, next thing that's on my needles. Ooh, what should I start with? I'll start with a little project. This is a long-term project, I think. This is a project that I feel sure I will finish it one day, but I'm not under any pressure. I take this little project with me if I want to go, well, not if I want to, if I go somewhere where I've got to wait, like um, doctor's appointment, dentist appointment, um, or if I'm going somewhere nice, um, where I might want to do some knitting, and I only want to take something really small with me, um, that's only going to use as much as the little bag carries, i.e. Uh, there's only two colours in this, so like I wouldn't probably take a massive jumper project um, yeah, to go, to knit in the waiting room if I'm, I've got an appointment. So this is the thing that I take around with me, and it, so it could take a while to finish, because that does seem to be the only time that I've knitted on this. I started it on holiday, we went on holiday this year to Cape Verde, um, over New Year, which was amazing. Um, and yeah, so as I said, I wanted something really small just to stuff in my suitcase so that I had something to do on the beach um, in the evenings. We had a self catering um, apartment and it was perfect because I could just carry it around with me, um, put it in my beach bag, go down to the beach with it. Um, bit felt a bit strange knitting woolly socks. Oh, I've just given away what the project is, but knitting on a on a woolly item, <laughs> which you now know is a sock, <laughs> um, on a hot beach. But absolutely brilliant, all the same. And um, I think this was a free pattern again from Ravelry. I do buy patterns. I do pay money for patterns on Ravelry, but I happen to have found lots of nice free ones lately, and. I very quickly found this on Ravelry on the day before we went, the evening before we went on holiday because um, I was packing, frantically packing and, uh, and I thought oh I need some knitting to take with me but I didn't have anything small um, to work on so I just went on Ravelry and I found this pattern and I'm only going to show you the picture because although I'm absolutely sure it was a free pattern just in case it wasn't, I don't really want to give away any of the pattern. That's what this. So, pretty sure this is a free pattern, free free download. But there we are. There's the picture of it. Um, it's just called mini skein, mini skein striped socks. And it doesn't say on my bit of paper here. Um, well, actually, it does say at the bottom. It says. Well, copyright by Xenia Baxter, so if maybe it was Xenia Baxter who's written this pattern. But if that's not the case, or even if it is, I'll um, I'll put the, the details here so that you can see how to spell it. If anybody wants to look up a sock pattern. Um, yeah, mini skein sock pattern. I'm not actually using mini skeins. Skeins? How do you say it? Skeins. I'm not using mini skeins, I'm using, I'll show you the yarn, uh, but I did want stripy socks, so I'm using two different types of yarn. This is the first one, and uh, not sure how well the colour's going to show, because it's not that I'm complaining about the lovely beautiful weather, but it's a bit bright in here this afternoon. Um, I've got the window just there, and loads of beautiful sun just glaring through the window, which is lovely. You, you might be able to hear the woodpecker. I don't know if you can, but there's a woodpecker out there. It's been really busy the last few days. Um, there's a couple around the farm. I'm sure there's two or three, and they're really loud. They're really busy doing something, pecking, pecking wood. You might be able to hear it. Hopefully you can, because it's a lovely sound. But anyway, I digress. This is the yarn. Um, I haven't done it in a cake. I didn't have a cake winder. It was before. It was before I got my cake winder. I think I ordered that after Christmas. I've only had that cake winder, um, yeah, wool winder for, um, what is it now, March? A couple of months. So I hand wound this. It came in a big, um, you know, the loop that's all twisted. Is that a skein? Do you call that a hank? I don't know. I need to learn the words better for knitting, but 
it's a lovely mix. I'm going to call this berries because I can't remember the colour. <laughs> I'm rubbish. Uh, but I'll write it. I will put it in the notes. But the yarn is by Fiber Space. And they've got the most beautiful range of yarn. Um, pretty sure this is a lace weight. Um, you get a lot. This is about half of it. Um, where's the other half? Oh, it's somewhere in the knitting room. I've wound the other half into a cape. So this is only about half of the amount, plus what's in the sock already, which isn't very much. Um, and it's really lovely. Now, is this called a variegated yarn? Is that what you call it when you've got a colour going through and it's essentially it's one colour or from one colour group. So this is pinks, salt pinks and purples, isn't it? But it's deeper in some areas than in others. So you've got like a pale pink and then you've got a reddy pink and then you've got like a darker plum purple all sort of merging through the ball. Is that called variegated? What's it called when that happens? When you've when someone's dyed their yarn like that? I love it. I think it's beautiful, but I don't know the right term for it. So I'm going to say variegated, but please, please somebody tell me if I'm right or if I'm wrong. That's the first one, Fibre Space, it's absolutely gorgeous. And the second one is Drops Alpaca. Love Drops, it's Drops yarn, it's brilliant. And um, you can get it from Wool Warehouse, um, everybody who's gonna know this, but everybody in the UK, sorry, everybody in the UK probably will know this. If you're a knitter, if you have ever heard of Drops yarn, you probably know you can get this from Wool Warehouse, as well as lots of other places where they've got the full range. Um, and it's drops, I think it's baby alpaca silk. I don't, I've lost the label. So I don't know for sure, but I think I will try to find out so that I can put this in the notes. But it's definitely drops, it's definitely got alpaca in it, and I'm pretty sure it's got silk because it's really soft. It's really beautiful. So that's a pale pink. And here is the sock. Oh, it's a bit tangled up in my, in my circular needles there. But there's the beginning of the sock. That's the, this side of the sock is the top, will sit on the top of my foot. And um, I've done a deliberate, this bit's not in the pattern, I think I made this bit up myself, but I've done a little row of garter stitch just there. Can you see it? I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but. Um, I like it on, on your normal socks that you get from the shops. Let me see if my socks have got it. No, the ones I'm wearing, I haven't got this. But, um, on a lot of socks you buy from the shop, you get this little seam going across the top here. I don't, how do you do that in knitting? How do you make it so that you get the seam? You could knit a, around like that, like you do your heel, but then seam it there. Please let me know if anybody knows a pattern where you knit the toe all in one, and then you do your grafting, or you, you, whatever it is you do to finish the sock, to close the hole here. Because it's like socks from the shops. And that's what I want to be able to knit, but... So I've just done a faux seam to make it look like that's what's happened. And I just did a little bumpy garter stitch row there. I don't know who I'm fooling really, but <laughs> I don't know if anybody will be convinced really about that. And I've... The toe, I've done um, both the arms together. I held them together, so I've got a thicker toe which looks a bit bulky when I'm holding the sock. It looks like it won't sit right, but once it's on my foot, it does work really well and it does keep my toes really warm. I only wish that I'd gone further down because um, it only keeps the tips of my toes warm. So if I do make another pair of socks, I'll probably keep going for a bit longer with that double layer of yarn. Um, and um, it's not, obviously, it's not self-striping because it's two colours. Um, I've just, I've got a bit of a, if I hold it like that, you can see there's a little bit of an issue here and that, as you may be able to guess, is where I've just carried the yarn up. Um, I've got three rows of each colour and I'm not cutting the yarn after each row. Um, oh, I've got a few loose ends there, but that's not from cutting, that's not because I've cut the yarn after every row. I've been carrying the yarn up like that. And, um, through fear of getting that little sort of ladder that you get when you come to the end of your row um, on double points or on well or on magic, on magic loop 
um, I've kind of over tightened my tension a little bit on that first stitch um, and because that also has involved in some places using the yarn that's from a few rows below I've ended up doing it a bit tight but never mind it doesn't show when it's on my foot that's what's important isn't it and I'll just practice that a little bit better as I go along so hopefully I'll get better at that as I go along um, I'll see it as being good practice for things like stranded colour work. I've got them on my Knit Pro Circulars. Can't remember the size I'm using. Um, it's probably 2.25 2 maybe. Don't know. Um, yep, so I've got them on my Knit Pro Circulars, which I really love, doing the magic loop. Um, is this the pair that... I've got a pair of Knit Pro. I've got one set of I've got one set of circular needles. I've only ever bought Knit Pro. Um, I've got not very many circular um, needle, not very much circular needle. What's the word? Equipment. <laughs> um, I've got a limited amount of um, of cables and needles. I've never bought a full set. Um, I've just got the sizes of needles that I need for a particular project at the time, um, and. Um, I think I have bought several cables and I've lost all my little interlockers so I've no idea where those have gone. I don't know how I've done that. Um, and a couple, Knit Pros are brilliant, but a couple of times I've had to actually super glue the needle onto the cable during a project, which means that it's not really any longer an interchangeable, it's just become a fixed needle. Um, because the thread, one of them, a couple of them, the threads had gone. So which is a bit sad because I think Knit Pro are brilliant. Um, don't know if you get that problem with any of the other brands. Um, I would like to try the higher higher actually. So perhaps one day I'll treat myself to some higher hires and see. Um, but I think now I know how to do Magic Loop. I'm perfectly happy just using a fixed cable anyway and just pulling it through. Because um, I think you can probably make that work for any project that you do. Yeah. But it's always handy to have some interchangeables as well. So anyway, that's that project. I don't have any project bags like these lovely, um, you see these really lovely, pretty, zippy project bags um, on other people's podcasts. And some people have got the most gorgeous, cute, lovely project bags. And I think I'd like one now. I thought, I didn't think I did need one, but I think I do need one in my life now. And quite possibly I will make my own, maybe. Maybe I'll put it out there now. Perhaps I'll try to make my own before my next podcast and then I'll have something that I've sewn to show you. Um, I've got loads of fabric in this cupboard there. That is where all my fabric lives and some lovely fabric in that little basket there as well. I've got plenty to choose from. So maybe I'll make a project bag. But this project is living in the bag that you get when you order wool from Wool Warehouse, which is why it's brilliant. Well, one reason why it's brilliant. Whenever you order wool from Wool Warehouse, I've got no, I've got no affiliation to Wool Warehouse, by the way. I, there's loads of other yarn shops that I absolutely love, which I'm sure I'll talk about and mention. It's only because I'm showing you the bag. And that's where this yarn, this yarn came from. The fibre space didn't come from there. Um, but whenever you order yarn from Wool Warehouse, you get it in one of these bags, which is like a gauze bag. Um, I'm pretty sure that would stop a moth from getting in there, would it? That'd be good. And it's drawstring, so you can just shove projects in there, uh, it keeps it all together. It's brilliant because you can see through it, so you can see really quickly what project you've got. Actually, do I need to make a project bag really when I've got quite a few of these lying around? Just order more wool from a warehouse and then I'll have loads of these. That could be a good plan. I'll just put those there. Um, yeah, I've got loads of those bags. I've got little ones and big ones and loads of yarn sitting around in them. There, look. There's more there. That's just got all my stash in it. Okay. Next thing on the needles. This is something I've been working on for ages. Oh, ages. And I have, oh, I've probably knitted this several times over already without even completing it. The amount of knitting I've done on this project equals the full project and probably the full project all over again, I think. Um, yeah. It's not a pattern, um, it's one I'm making up. It's not a written pattern from anywhere, it's 
Um, I'm following some guidelines from the brilliant, brilliant website Fringe Association. Um, oh, I've forgotten the lady's name, but she's amazing. She knows loads about knitting and she shares absolutely loads on her website. So if you are new to knitting or if you are a, haven't been knitting for ages and you feel you want to, I don't know, if you think you want to learn something new, just have a look at her website because there might be some stuff on there that you don't know. She's really good. She's very, uh, I think she's very disciplined. I get that impression. She's really disciplined knitter and very good at sharing what she knows. So thank you to the lady from Fringe Association and I will check, I should have done it before the podcast started, checked your name because I used to know it and I've just, I've forgotten it, I'm so sorry. I'll write it here. But anyway, Fringe Association blog, um, I saw it pinned, I saw an image of a jumper pinned and I followed the link, found this website and um, the particular blog post that was the picture was linked to was a um, tutorial which covered several blog posts. Um, on how to knit your own top-down jumper. Um, how to take your own measurements, how to work out how many stitches you need, um, doing your gauge swatch, and working out the measurements and calculations for things like your raglan sleeves and um, all of that. So it was brilliant and that's what I've used to do this. Thing is, when I read something if there's lots of writing, I tend to just skip through it really quickly, think that I've read it all really well, start whatever it is I'm doing, plough on, plough through it, and then realise I've done something wrong. And then it takes me quite a while, but usually it's something to do with, in fact, it's it's everything to do with the fact that I just haven't read something properly. I've, I've completely missed out a whole sentence or I've t misinterpreted it just by not being slow and thinking and reading through and really thinking about it. Um, so that's why I, what's happened here, um, why I've had to knit this several times. <laughs> um, and actually one, one of the reasons was because the first one that I knitted was just with a moss stitch, a single moss stitch. And I knitted the whole of the body portion of it, put it on and then realised the moss stitch didn't sit well at all. It just looked like a really rigid sort of tube. Um, I wanted something more drapey. So I ripped the whole thing back, ripped it all back and decided to do it in double moss stitch where you alternate the stitch every two rows rather than every one row. Um, and I got this lovely drapey, beautiful, lovely stitch, which I'm really happy with. But it meant redoing all the calculations, the new gauge swatch. Oh, I'm, I won't show you the notepad. It's just, an, in fact, no, I will. Look at this. Well, this is how it started. It started with the best of intentions, really lovely and neat. Hopefully this, yeah, you might be looking at that backwards, you might be looking at it the right way around, we'll see. But I did all these drawings, I wrote all my measurements, I was very studious, really, really unusual for me. I did all the workings out and I wrote it all like as if I was writing a pattern for myself because I had this, um, what now seems like a folly of a, an idea <laughs> that I would, this would go smoothly and I would be able to just buy some more yarn in a different colour, same needle, same yarn um, weight, and re-knit it following my own pattern, my own instructions. But the neatness of this descended over time and several re-knits into, gosh, where is it, into that and that, which is just probably made sense to me when I first did it but is absolute just looks like chaos now to me um, I've got all these numbers written I've got stuff written there I've got things ticked off don't know what it all means don't know what it means now but happily somehow I don't know how but somehow I've managed to get this out of those instructions I'll do my best to show you because I don't think the light's going to be very good I'll stand up that's better so I've managed to get this and if I hold it against myself you can see it actually fits oh I hope it's gonna fit me I hope it's gonna drape well anyway I have tried this on so I do know that what I've done so far fits um, where's the best way for me to stand so that you can see it anyway I'll hold it up to the screen so that you can see the lovely stitch um, 
<coughs> and also the great big line of long stitches I did, which I'm not, I'm not going to frog it. I'm not pulling it out and re-knitting them. I'm going to live with this mistake. Can you see it? I'm sure you can. I'm sure everybody can see that. Yes, it's terrible, but oh, just I put a pocket over it. Or maybe I've knitted this jumper so many times I have not. If I go wrong now, that's it. It's staying in the jumper. It's going to be a part of the jumper, um, just like that that little row there that everybody can probably see. Oh, I was probably watching um, Downton Abbey. I bet. Yeah. I've been watching Downton Abbey on um, Encore, on Sky is it? On our telly anyway. Um, I found that they were showing it back to back from series one. So since about Christmas, I've, uh, up until only last week when we finished, oh what's that face? Um, I've been watching Downton Abbey at least once a night, maybe two a night, I think even once three a night, which is a lot of Downton Abbey. But look, it's helped me to get all of this done. Um, I've got raglan sleeves. Hmm. One of them's straight, one of them's curved. I think that's because I should have modified the way that I've done my decre um, increases. <sighs> Something else for me to try and learn. Um, anyway, I'm happy with it. I don't mind. It fits. For my next jumper, I'll look a little bit more detail into how to make your raglan symmetrical. <laughs> Um, should have done that before but anyway you live and learn don't you and what they say is you've got to do something wrong in order to learn it properly you learn better by your mistakes than by just always doing things right because it'd be just really boring if we always got things right wouldn't it so so I'm going to keep these little mistakes in here because I think that they're good little lessons for me I'll quickly show you the yarn um, drops again very good value for money. 100% wool, Drops Alaska in the colourway um, Dark Olive, I think. Dark Olive, I think it is. So it's a really nice earthy colour, really sort of earthy dark green colour, which oh, is, it looks really dark on the screen. Um, it is a dark green, but it's not as dark as the screen showing it. Hmm, shall I? If I just move it around, that doesn't help. Anyway, it's a lovely colour. And some of it is in cake form, as you can see. Most of it's in cake form. I've got plenty to do um, the full jumper for once. Um, I've bought enough yarn to actually complete the project. Well, I'm getting better at that now. If I'm doing a jumper, I do try to buy enough yarn. Um, it, I do buy enough yarn to finish the jumper. I definitely have with this one anyway. I've got tons of the stuff. So and I do like the idea of having a grey one because the I've got some yarn in this Drops Alaska in a really sort of warm, lovely grey colour, so maybe not too soon, but maybe in time for next autumn I might replicate this jumper if it works out. But I won't be using those instructions because I can't read them. <laughs> I won't be able to understand them. Right, I'll quickly go on to the next project because I've been talking for ages already. Um, I'll just show you the next project very, very quickly. Sorry about the creaky chair again. Um, everybody's doing this. Can you see it there? You can probably guess what it is. Right, everybody's making this. I've seen loads of them and when I first saw this um, project, maybe, oh, I don't know how long ago, but maybe it was on a blog. I, it didn't catch me, it didn't grab me. I kind of thought, oh, no, I don't think I'm going to make that. But as I've been watching podcasts, and seeing um, people showing these blankets on, um, you know, live on a video, um, I think it. I just think it really brings them to life, and the enthusiasm of the person making them for the yarn that they're putting into it, for where they're going to put each colour, it's just it caught me completely, and um, and I'm in on it. I'm on. I've jumped on the wagon, and I've got my own one started. And I've got loads of yarn, so it just makes total sense to um, to make one of these blankets because I've got enough yarn in this room alone, I think, to make probably several full king size blankets, I imagine. Have I? Yeah, probably, probably. So here it is. Um, I think I started it a couple of weeks ago, roughly. I don't know the date exactly. 
and this is what I've got done so far. I am going to start, I'm going to push my chair back so you can see the whole thing. There we go. But I don't think you can see the colours very well, so I'll just, sorry, that's really noisy for you. Um, I'll give you some close-ups of the colours and I'll just, I'll talk you through a couple of them, but not all of them because I think that I wanna, I'll run out of time. Um, so, first square that I knitted on this project, I'll just try not to dangle it in my tea. Can you see it? Anyway, it's that one. I started with that. And that is some yarn that I hand dyed all by myself, which I am I'm very new to doing that. Um, I really enjoyed it, so I'm, I'm hoping to do some more very soon. And I bought um, quite a lot of yarn from a company called Laxton's, brilliant company. They sell undyed yarn um, for hand dyeing. Um, you, if you're a weaver, I think you can get, um, or a spinner, you can get yarn, or sorry, fibres from there as well. So I just bought the undyed um, skeins of yarn. Um, and this one I think is merino, 100% merino, I'm pretty sure. And it's, um, what have they called it, a marl? Yeah, because they've plied together um, a pale grey with a, a white. Well, it's not white, it's you know, the natural sort of cream colour of yarn, of, um, of the fibre. So it's two naturals, a, a really pale, a nice pale grey and a, and a cream. So that when you dye it, you get this effect. And that's, that's what I made the cardi for my little niece in. So it's lovely and bright um, and, ch and soft and chunky and warm and this is absolutely gorgeous yarn to knit with. I'm going to get loads more of that and I'm going to do some more dyeing and I'm going to make myself a jumper out of that because it's really lovely. So that's a future list project but yep. Yeah. yeah, sorry you can't see it very well. Um, maybe I should not podcast when it's so bright outside. We'll see next time what happens. Um, another one that I hand dyed myself, that was the first dye bath, it was cochineal. I think I got the colours in powder form from Wild Colour, so that was cochineal. And then the second dye bath um, from that same dye, um, I put this yarn in, and this is, is it worsted? Um, that might be a merino as well. Anyway, it's from Laxton's, it's another one of the ones from Laxton's. Um, and I tied bits of yarn really tightly around the hank when I put it into the dye, before I put it into the dye bath, so I've got variegated? Is it variegated? Is that variegated? What do we call it? It's all one colour, it's all from one dye bath, one dip, um, one dip only, producing yarn that's got different depths of the colour along the, um, along the length of the yarn. Ooh, there's a good example. Do you call that variegated? Anyway, it's a lovely effect. It's a really soft, gorgeous yarn. So, and that's how that one knitted up. That's my latest square. I did that one last night. That's a really nice one. Um, I'll show you one more. Tell me about one more. Which one can I tell you about? Um, that one. Hmm, don't know how well you're going to see the colour there. Maybe this wasn't the best choice. Oh yeah, that's good. This is a tweed yarn. I bought this from my local wool shop. Actually, that's a good choice of one to show you because I can tell you about my local wool shop as well. I got this last Saturday. Um, I got two balls of yarn from my local wool shop. I went shopping to the co-op to do my shopping and then I thought I'm going to treat myself to a couple of balls of yarn because the wool shop's only across the road. Brilliant. Um, and I got two balls of yarn. Well, that one and um, that one. Turn it upside down so you can see a bit better. Sorry, the screen went off then. Um, that one. And they're both tweed yarns. There we go, the colour's better now. Um, and they've both got little colour, little flecks of colour going through and they're chunky and rustic um, and sort of, if it was paint, it wouldn't be gloss, it would be matte. Do you know what I mean? That sort of lovely matte sort of, um, oh, what's the word to describe the texture of this yarn? Mm, not fuzzy, but anyway, matte, like matte paint. 
it's lovely. And that, those two yarns from my local yarn shop are um, Debbie Bliss Orange Weed. There's the tag. Doesn't say a name for the colourway. It's just got the number on it. So I'll just write that in the notes. I, lo I really love yarn colour names. That usually attracts me to actually buying that yarn, that colour as well. Um, if I don't like the name of a yarn, unless I really love the colour of the yarn, I probably won't buy the yarn. I'll find something that's the same colour somewhere else and then if it's got a better name, is that bad? Anyway, I'm really, really, I know that other people have said this, but I'm very influenced by colour names. Um, but this hasn't got a colour name on the label so maybe on the website it will and I might go and have a look after this out of curiosity but it's um, a really rustic lovely grey sheepy it's very sheepy wool um, and it's got flecks of yellow orange white black going through it so very tweedy and lovely and the other one was um, this one it feels nearly the same it's got a different yarn content it has got a bit of nylon in it um, or is it nylon? No, polyester. See, normally I just buy 100% natural fibres. Um, I didn't really read the label. I just picked the ball up, loved it and bought it and then noticed once I got home that it had polyester in. But it doesn't matter because I'm not making a jumper out of it. Um, it's a patch in my blanket and I love it. So it's fine. It doesn't matter. It's absolutely fine. Most of it's wool. And this has got flecks of, this is a really spring, beautiful spring colour. Oh, I wish you could see it better. Um, it's got flecks of yellow, turquoise in there, like an aqua blue, some really cute, beautiful pink. It just looks like a meadow in spring. Can you see that? That's what I'd call, if it was me, if it was down to me, I'd call this meadow in spring. Yes, meadow in spring, that would be the colourway, but... There's just a number on the um, label. So it's by Camilla. Oh, it says DMC. Is that the company? DMC? Anyway, DMC Camilla, made in Italy. Um, bulky weight, colour number 82. So anyway, there's the label. There is the lovely yarn. And it's in my blanket, so that's brilliant. I've got loads more yarn just sat there, but I don't think I've got time to show you all of that. Um, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll show you a bit more in the next podcast. I'll talk about the, the rest of the yarn in, in another podcast. So I'll put that there. Oh, what I'm doing with this is, um, I haven't got any actual sock yarn in this, but I think I've got my eye on some sock yarn from Meadow, a shop called Meadow Yarns online. Um, forgotten the name of it, I've written it on a knitting pattern randomly somewhere um, but it's that's got a really spring timey colour as, uh, name as well and it's kind of greens, pinks, yellows all really cute, lovely beautiful springy colours um, and I'm tempted to buy that and do some socks with it um, even though I'm not really a sock knitter I just really want that yarn and I'm thinking if I do that and I've got any left it'll go in the blanket or I might just buy it to put in the blanket We'll see. The idea is to use off cut, um, off cuts, um, leftovers really for this blanket, but I keep buying new yarn for it. And let me just show you one more yarn actually, because this was really, I was so excited about getting this yarn. Madeline Tosh. <gasps> Unicorn's Tales. Oh. oh, it's just lovely. Now I've got two colours here wound into one cake because I bought the colours Dust Bowl and Celadon. There we go, the darker one's Dust Bowl and that one's Cel the paler one's Celadon. Um, they're almost luminous, they're absolutely beautiful, they've got, they sort of, it's, I don't know how to describe it, sh the colours just shine out, it's just amazing, it's so soft and yummy that I can't wait to put this into my blanket. Um, but I got the mini skeins, skeins? I honestly don't know how to say that word, mini skeins. I think everyone says skein. I got the mini skeins from um, Loop Yarn in Islington. Absolutely amazing shop. Pretty sure everybody's going to know about it. I ordered them online, get quite a lot of yarn from there. Um, 
and when they came they looked absolutely gorgeous I wanted to keep them in their mini ski skein form to show you like that um, on the podcast but I was too impatient and I wanted to cake it put it into a cake and put it into my blanket um, I haven't put it in my blanket yet because I keep moving where I'm going to put what where I'm going to put this color but I definitely know now I've been putting little tabs on the ends on the squares when I think that I know where a certain colour is going to go like this one here so I've just it seems a bit of a crime actually to chop a bit off because that's going to go to waste although I'll use that as a stitch marker somewhere that's what I do with bits of yarn like that that's going to go next to this pinky one I think it looked lovely so that's my Madeleine Tosh I don't have the label here no I don't it's downstairs somewhere but it's a Madeleine Tosh um, mini skein yeah from Luke Yarn so that's the next one that's the next one I'm going to put in to that blanket um all right have I got anything else I need to show you my tea's gone a little bit cold but I'm still going to drink it because it's delicious I'll put a bit more warm in um I'll very quickly show a little bit of crochet because this has gone on for ages now. It's over an hour, I'm sure. Is it? Um, I, these aren't finished objects from too recently, but one of them, actually one of them is the first ever thing that I ever, ever crocheted. And the other thing is the most recent thing that I crocheted. Um, so that's quite appropriate. So good way to introduce you into my crochet. First thing I ever, ever crocheted, um, how many years? Let's say it was, um, gosh, could it be 10 years ago? Hmm, I thought I hadn't been crocheting that long, but it might be 10. It's no more than 10 years ago anyway. Between six and 10 years ago. <laughs> That's very vague. Um, anyway, it's a scarf. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this really quickly because um, the podcast lasted for ages so far. Um, first ever crochet project, there we are. Made with Wendy Wool Fusion. I can't remember the colourway now. It's discontinued long, long, long ago. I got this from my hometown. There was um, a shop called Boys. Anybody heard of Boys? Are they still? I think they're still going. You, there might still be one in my hometown. Um, but they had a wool department. And me and my friend used to go there and buy wool and um, knit yeah, or crochet. Um, but you can tell this is a, well, this is a dead giveaway. So this is the first thing that I ever crocheted because look at the ends. Yeah, I had no idea um, that you had to know where the first and last stitches were in crochet and that, that was important for you to get a straight edge. I just didn't know. So um, that's what I ended up with because I've obviously crocheted this scarf long ways, stitches going like that. Like that, I make my hand look like a little worm there, but I went that way, all the way along, all the way along back. And I don't know why I made it so long, but look, it's metres. I don't know how long it is, but it's really, it's like a metre and a half. Maybe it's even two. I think it's two metres. I can't even show you how long it is. I'll do that. <laughs> you might get an idea. But I, um, I just double it and then double it again. And I wear it like that. And it's very cosy and snuggly and I still use it. So that was my first ever project. I just learned using a book for that one. I got a book. Got a crochet hook don't know where I got that from can't remember probably borrowed one book from the library I used to work in an art college so um, I think I just got a book from the library one evening in the college and uh, I used to run the art shop so um, occasionally we used to have it open once a week in the evening for the evening classes so but it wasn't very busy so I just used to sit and read salvage magazines from the library and knit do my crochet <laughs> I don't think they really liked me doing crochet, but what you know, whatever. I didn't have anything else to do, so. And look how productive I was being. Why would you not encourage someone to learn a new skill while they're at work? Anyway, so that's that. And the most recent thing I've crocheted um, is, it was actually before Christmas, I think. Oh, it was way before Christmas. Oh, I should know the date. I should know the month at least. Anyway, it was in the winter, I think. I remember it being late autumn, early winter, possibly. Um, and um, 
some people might know who I'm talking about if I mention this lady's name. Um, but this this is a bit of a tribute project to this lady. Um, this pattern is one from her website, which I will I I can't remember the full proper name of her website, but I'll put it here absolutely for sure or in the blog notes. Um, but this is my mandala for wink, and this. These were all over Instagram, they probably still are, I'm sure there's still people doing them. Um, and this is one of her patterns, I downloaded it for free off her website. And I've used the exact colours that she put in her own pattern because it's such a beautiful colour combination. Um, and it's all yarn out of my stash. So that is my tribute, my, I like to call it a celebration of Wink's work, Marinka her name was. Um, of her beautiful work and her passion for crocheting for colour and um, there we go it lives on in it lives on on my windowsill anyway I look at this every day and I just smile at these gorgeous colours and I think the name of the pattern was something to do with tulips and possibly Amsterdam but I'll look it up um, I'll look it up and get put a link on because it's such a pretty really really pretty beautiful mandala um with it's got little clusters and it's like tulip stitches here and the color combinations were so gorgeous i think it would look really lovely knitted about 20 times bigger and then thrown over your bed so watch this space maybe maybe i'll do a bed sized one of these one day because i think that would be gorgeous or a rug yeah it'd make a good rug so thank you marinka thank you wink for that lovely pattern um you can see it. <laughs> so that was my most crochet, recent crocheted um, project. I have done lots of crochet um, over the last year, um, but lots of it um, has been given away because, um, oh, if you go to my blog, you might be able to see. Uh, well, you will be able to see. Um, I've done loads of blankets um, as gifts. Actually, I've done some for me as well. So maybe next podcast I can show you a blanket. That will be quite an achievement if I can fit a blanket into the screen, but. Yeah, perhaps I can show you that. Or I might have started crocheting something. But I've got enough knitting to do for the time being. And, well, I have set myself the challenge of maybe making a project bag. So, yeah, I've probably got quite enough to do, actually. Um, and I think I'm going to stop there because I have been talking for ages. And I've got absolutely tons more to show you. There's actually a few more things on my list. But it's just going to be too long um, of a po podcast if I do that. So I'll just save it for the next one. And I hope that you will join me for the next podcast. Um, maybe, hopefully you'll be back. Oh, before I go, I'll, I've showed you my teacup. But can I just show you my teapot? Because I've been using it all through the podcast. Um, and you haven't even seen it. And it's very important. It's a very important feature of my podcast, actually, and of my life, because <laughs> I love using it. So it's got a tea cosy on. The tea cosy was a gift and the teapot was a gift. Um, I did not knit this tea cosy, but I would like to knit a tea cosy at some point. So there we go. It's just a nice plain blue one. Totally essential to keep the tea warm. But what a shame, though, to cover up this. It's, um, like I say, this was a gift to me. But I do know where it's from, so I can tell you the website. Um, and my tea's still warm in it. I've got loads of licorice tea in here. And it's just so lovely and colourful. It's got gold on it. I don't think it's real gold though. I'll look underneath and then I can tell you. It was by Emily Jones. And I think her website is emilyjoneschina. Dot something or other. Com or dot com or dot co dot uk. I'll put it here. But yeah. Um, she's got lots of designs on the website. They're really beautiful. And I think you can get in touch and tell her um, what combination of teapot and, and design you want. I think I'm right in saying this. Um, and you can order yourself a beautiful teapot. Um, oh, maybe for my birthday, I'll have another one. Who knows? Perhaps I'll treat myself to another one. So that's my lovely teapot. Um, yeah, and I'm definitely now going to say goodbye. And thank you very much for watching. Um, if you're still here. <laughs> For anybody that's stuck with this all the way through, thank you so much. 
Um, if anyone can give me any tips on using Photo Booth and particularly editing in iMovie or QuickTime, I don't know. I, is there anywhere on Ravelry where people discuss the technicalities of doing podcasts, like sound? Lighting, I think I'm all right. I know today it's not brilliant because um, the lighting is glaring through. I just need a less bright day to do it. But, well, any tips on anything is great, is great anyway. But um, particularly for me, it's, that, it's the bit about putting writing here or wherever you want to put the writing. And... Um, and editing bits out, I don't know how to chop bits out, so you might have to sit through an hour and ten minutes if you are, if you've got the stamina to do that <laughs> with this podcast. Um, hopefully I might be able to edit some bits down and out and then it'll be shorter, but any tips are gratefully received, so that'll be good. And it'd be really lovely if anybody wants to come and say hello, just to let me know if you've seen this podcast. Um, come along and say hello to, you can comment on the on the blog you can comment on um, Instagram or if I can get anything on to go on there um, come and say hello on Ravelry best place to say hello to me totally okay right so hello to everyone that's watched and thank you very much and goodbye and um, see you next time um, have a lovely week and happy knitting <laughs>